Hey guys, good night. And I just want to welcome you guys once again to Oikos, as we say every week. Oikos is our humble attempt to allow Jesus to carry us home where we find rest and we're refreshed for that work ahead. So we're beginning a new series tonight. We just finished our series on Elijah, the man of God. And we saw this idea of becoming that individual whose whole life is simply led by God. And tonight we're beginning a new series and we're going to Continue the story in a sense. Now we're going to talk about Elisha. We're going to talk about Elijah's trainee, Elijah's Padawan, in a sense, you could say. And we're starting this series about faith. And essentially, this is going to be about faith through the eyes of Elisha. And we're titling this series, Take the Risk. And tonight, we're going to talk about Take the Risk to Say Yes. And as we begin, I want to ask you all a question. And for a moment, I, I just want you to step back and to just imagine what could happen if you gave God complete control of your life. If you got to a place where you said, okay, Lord, not only do I believe, but I trust, here's my life. My complete faith is in you. I know it sounds scary to just say, God, here it is. You know, when we look at it at face value and when we look at the scriptures, you know, we serve a world changing God. And when he uses people, he will use people to the ends of the earth. And it's scary at times because at times we have our agendas. We have our goals. We have our dreams. We have our desires. You know, we have all these things we want to do. And what do we say? We say, Lord, I love you. I'm here. I'm for you. This is what I want to do. How can I get you to be a part of this plan? Instead of just saying, it's all to the side, and Lord, just take me. Just take me, here I am. And so that's essentially what we're going to learn together through this series, the idea of taking that risk. Because living for God is taking a risk. Standing for the Lord is taking a risk. The Lord, is, it's, He's going to challenge us at times. And not only is He going to challenge us at times, but we're going to see that we're in a culture, we're in a society where no matter the time, no matter the place, no matter the ages, it's always been not friendly for the people of God. And so we see we have to take the risk at times to stand up. We have to take the risk at times when we're called to simply say yes, even when we may not understand, even when we may not know what the Lord's full plan is. We still move forward. And, and that's what we're going to see through this series, you guys. This idea of taking the risk. Take the risk in faith and see what God will do through you. See how he will take the ordinary and mold it into extraordinary. So why don't we go before the Lord and let's pray for our word tonight. So Father in heaven, as we just come before you, we give you our praise. We give you our thanks. For you alone are God, you alone are holy, Lord, and we just ask that you just go before this text. Father in heaven, we just pray that you open up our ears and our hearts to receive, to glean Holy Spirit. Lead the way. Jesus, your brightest listening, speak to her as she longs to hear from you tonight. So we ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, you guys. So why don't you turn in your Bibles with me. To 1 Kings 19. So we're going to go a little bit back in order to get to where we're headed. Last we left off, we were already on 2 Kings chapter 1, chapter 2 is where we left off. But we're going a little bit back as we're going to go and see the calling here of Elisha. And we're going to see that calling of this individual, this man of God. So as you're turning to 1 Kings 19, I want to give you a little bit of context of just what's been going on. You know, it's been a while that we haven't been here in like three, four weeks. So just a little context of what we see, the, the, the verses surrounding <clears throat> what we're discussing tonight. So Elijah the prophet hasn't ascended. He's still on the scene. He's doing his thing. He's already confronted the false prophets of Baal. He's already had that suicidal moment we discussed weeks behind. And at that time, we remember that when he had these suicidal moments, he had this refreshment that came from that still, small voice of God. And at that conversation that he has with God, we see that God says, go and anoint your successor. 
And that's where we're all, we are tonight. <clears throat> we're going to see that Elijah, and it's, it's really, it can get really confusing because their names sound so alike. But Elijah is going to go and he's going to find Elisha. And we see Elisha, he's the son of Shaphat. And that's all we know. He's the son of Shaphat and he seems to have been a farmer. He's plowing a field. Other than that, we don't know really much about him. And when we look at this at face value, we see this is good news. <clears throat> this is great news that God would use an individual like this. Because this helps us understand. And by us, I mean the individual that says, I can never be used by God. You know, God, God can't do something to me, through me. I'm not smart enough. You know, or I didn't go to Bible college. I don't know my Bible. Or I don't speak eloquently. I have a lisp. You know, I stutter. All these people that just say, I'm too ordinary. God would never use me because I'm just plain vanilla. I'm ordinary. There's nothing special about me. There's no sprinkles on my ice cream. And we see that that's not the case with God. He loves to take that ordinary and he makes it extraordinary. Because we see that that is when he's given the glory. That is when we see him working and we see his glory shine forth. So we see there's this guy, Elisha, regular guy, nothing special, not a priest. He's not a part of the royal family. You know, he's not a town hero. He's a, a simple man doing ordinary work. He's still living at home with his parents, working on the farm. And we see that this is where God meets him and God calls him. And we see his response. And what's his response? He takes the risk to say yes. He says, yes, Lord, I will follow. So with that all said, let's go. 1 Kings 19 verses 19 to 21 is where we're going to be at tonight. So we say that it says the following. Okay. At the first break. Okay. Okay. When you're ready. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's read the verse then for tonight. And it says this. 1 Kings 19, verse 19. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he was with the 12. Then Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, Please let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? So Elisha turned back from him and took a yoke of oxen and slaughtered them and boiled their flesh, using the oxen's equipment, and he gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and followed Elijah and became his servant. So like I said, we're talking about take the risk. And we see Elisha here. He takes the risk. He encounters Elijah, and he says, yes. He says, yes, I will follow. And I want us to look at this for a moment. Look at Elisha. He's working. He's doing what he's done his whole life. There's nothing special in the moment that he encounters Elijah. We just see that he's plowing the field, which he's plowed year after year, day after day, the same constant routine. You know, and for some of us, we're in this. We're doing the same constant daily routine. And we don't know what Elisha was thinking here. It doesn't say what he was thinking. But some of us, maybe we feel tired or we feel trapped and we just, we want to do something. We, we're dreaming for something bigger. And we're just like, when, Lord, when, when will this happen? And I want us to notice here that Elisha was just working faithfully at what he knew. There's no room given for any complaints. There's just the fact that he was working he was doing his everyday thing, and that's when God showed up. And see, and that's something so crucial for us because we want the heavens to just open and part. You know, we all want that aha moment at our calling, and we want the heavens to part. We want the light to just shine upon us. We want to even float off the ground a little, and we want to hear a heavenly voice that says, Go, be my voice, be my hands, change the world. You know, and we all want that. But that's not how it works. God works in the ordinary. We want the extraordinary, and God will work in the extraordinary 
but he usually begins with the ordinary. He'll grab our, our daily usual things that we do and he'll use those for his glory. See, and, and I love this because it reminds me of the words of Jesus. And in Luke 16, 10, Jesus says, If you are faithful in little things, you won't be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And a lot of times we like to end here. But Jesus goes on, and if you read verse 11 and 12, he continues and he says, If you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches of heaven? And if you are not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with the things of your own? See, and I love this because in a sense what Jesus is doing here, he's calling us out. You know, we're so constantly, oh God, but if, if only I had this, or oh God, if only I, I could be here, then I could truly do this. And Jesus just says, be faithful to where you are. Work hard at where you're at. And not just that, but he takes it to that other level. And he says, look, you're dishonoring your earthly boss, who you see. This person in front of you, flesh and blood, who you see, you dishonor him. Now, what are you going to do with me who you don't see? <clears throat> and so he takes it back to this reality of like, look, just be faithful in the little things. Plow that field. You know, you're a banker. Be a banker. You're a teacher. Teach. Do the things that God has appointed you to do. And in that you will see how God will begin to turn the ordinary into the extraordinary. But take that risk to say yes to that calling. And so we see Elisha's at work. And Elijah shows up and he puts that mantle over him. He puts that cloak over him. And this is extremely significant. See, we see that and we're like, oh, okay, whatever. But it's sort of what, it's, what, he, what he's doing here is that cloak of Elijah was Elijah's covering. It was Elijah's badge saying, this is who I am. It was a symbol of him being the prophet of God. So by Elijah putting it on Elisha, he's essentially telling Elisha, my calling will now be your calling. My covering is going to be your covering. And he's taking him on, essentially, as his Padawan. I will be your teacher, and you will be my Padawan. You will be my student. And as God has worked through me, he shall work through you also one day. And we see the, the response here of Elisha. And it's not a response of fear. It's not a response of, no, we're good. He just goes for it, like Bruce would say. He takes the risk, and he says yes to that calling. And notice this. Don't just... Read off and say, oh, he said yes, awesome, let's keep going. No, let's stop. And notice, Elisha got no details in the calling. He didn't get a paper. He didn't get a scroll from Elisha saying, so these are going to be your requirements. This is what we're seeking. This is where we think that you'll be promoted to in five years. Like, this is the whole job description. He gets none of that. He gets no details at all whatsoever. Yet, Elisha obeys. And he obeys because he trusted in God. He knew the God that he served. So he's like, you know what? I don't need to have the details. I know the God I serve. I'm in this. I'm taking that risk. I'm taking that risk and I'm saying yes. And Elijah could have had a million what if questions. Well, what if this happens? What if that happens? You know, what about benefits? You know, what about overtime? Well, what about this? You know, what about hospital visits? He could have had all these questions, but he doesn't. He doesn't need to understand the details. He doesn't need to know the details because he knows the God who's given that calling. And that's what it means to have faith. That's what it means to stand on that faith. And we see that it begins with taking that one risk. And we see that all Elisha simply tells Elijah is, Awesome, we're on this, just let me go say bye. And we see Elijah's like, dude, I didn't do anything, do whatever you want. And we see that he goes back, he says bye, and he's gonna do a couple things. And the other day, you know, when I was prepping for this, I, I heard a really interesting quote, and this quote was more for leadership, but I see how it's, it's so, um, 
it's so pertainable, it's so, it could be applied, so applicable to believers. And essentially what this person was saying is, we don't plan for the future, but we plan to respond to the present. And I'll say it again. We don't plan for the future, but we plan to respond to the present. See, and this is a huge thing for believers. This idea of we need to respond, we need to be available to that voice of God in the present, not in the future. Like I mentioned earlier, we were big on, well, maybe when I have this and when I have that, I can do this for God. But the question is, what if God shows up now? We can't plan, we can't dictate, we can't outline what God's going to call you to do in a year or in two years. We don't know. But you know what we can do? We can prepare our daily walk. We can grow in our faith in Him daily as we take time to be in His Word, to pray, to be with Him. We can walk with Him daily. And we see when the time comes, because we've walked with Him daily, then we will trust in Him fully. And so we see daily will always give you fully. And it's so crucial for us to understand that. We see David as the shepherd boy. He walked with God daily. He wrote his Psalms. He spent time with the Lord when he was looking over those sheep in those fields. And when the time came for him to be in the wilderness, he trusted fully. You know, Paul, he tells us in the epistles how he walked with God daily. He walked in the spirit, constantly seeking to just fill himself with things that were just edifying and glorifying to God. And we see that when he got sent out on all his crazy missionary exploits, he trusted fully. And it was because of the daily. So daily will always give you fully. So we see that the daily will always give you fully. And it's here where that faith is built up. We don't need to know the details. You know, we say, man, I'd love to know the details. But God says, no, you don't. I give you the details, you run away instead of going for it. So just trust, obey. And we know that God's, God's going to lead. And he's usually going to lead in three simple ways. It's either going to be go, no, or slow. And regardless, we trust, we obey, and we move forward. We take that risk. We take that risk and trust in Him. So maybe, you know, during this time, during this season in your life, you're in a bad relationship. God says, go. You know what? You've got to take that risk and be single. And that's, that might be a huge thing for you. That might be a huge risk for you. But God is telling you, go. He is telling you, take the risk. Be single. Let God take you to the fruitful pastures away from this barren wasteland. Or maybe, you know, you really, really want to go to such and such school. You know, if I make it to USC, if I make it to UCLA, if I get a degree from them, I, be, I will be set for life. And God's like, no, God has another plan for you. Take that risk and follow and obey where he's telling you to go. Obey that plan that he's laying out for you. You know, or maybe you want to change the world. You want to bring reform and you want to bring it now. And God says, slow. He says, slow down. You know, take that risk. Listen to the Lord. Listen to what he's calling you. Listen to his timing. And maybe the change doesn't begin with the world. It begins with you. And then with your family, with your neighbors, with your friends, co-workers, and eventually hits the world. But take the risk to stop and listen to what his voice is saying. And that is how radical faith begins, you guys. This radical faith that we're going to see in the life of Elisha, it begins by taking the risk and by putting aside our agendas for God's will in our lives. So we see Elisha says his goodbyes. He grabs his yoke of oxen. He breaks it. He starts a fire with it. He kills the animals, and then he gives them to the people to eat. And this is huge. Elijah doing this is huge. But essentially, he's giving up his livelihood. 
He is saying there's no coming back from this life. I am taking the risk and I am fully committing to the Lord and there's no plan B. It's God's plan and that's it for me. I am taking the risk and I'm saying yes to the Lord God. And imagine if Christians all over the world had this type of faith. This type of faith that said, yes, I will go, Lord, and I will leave everything behind. No agendas. No anything, just myself and my heart for you. Imagine the change in the world that we would see if we simply took the risk to say yes. You know, we said, Lord, I believe your word. I trust your plan. My faith is in you. You know, there, there's a, an old hymn and it simply says this. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. This is what it means to take the risk, you guys. To just follow Christ, to not turn back, and to just follow even if it's by yourself. Taking the risk, it's sometimes, it's, it's a lonely place to be at. Not many people like to take the risk. Many people like to play it safe, but God calls us to take that risk, to follow, to say yes to that calling. You know, and we see that as we stand for God, we might not be the most popular people. We might not end up having the most followers on Instagram. You know, we might not have nice comments and there are our images and our pictures and our words. But you know what? Do you even though you might feel alone and rejected by this world, the king of the universe, he will stand with you. And in heaven, as the scriptures tells us, you are surrounded by a great crowd of witnesses. And we see that that's the fruit of taking the risk and saying yes to that calling. Look at the calling of the apostles. We read the gospels and we just glance through these things. We just glance through the livelihoods of these individuals. You know, we know Peter, Andrew, James, John, they left their nets to follow Jesus. We know Matthew was a tax collector. He left his prof um, profession. He left his tax booth. You know, even Simon, the zealot, he left his dreams, his goals, you know, to be a zealot, to liber liberate Israel. He left it all behind. These men, they took the risk to follow Jesus. They put aside agendas, dreams, goals, to follow Christ. They gave it all. And we saw that their faith changed the world. We saw how their faith spread across the world. And that's what it means to take that risk. Elisha, we're going to see, he's a huge risk taker. Look at him at the end. If we go um, to the end of Elijah. And Elijah's about to get um, transported to heaven. And so Elijah's like, bro, you've been following me. What do you want me to give you before you leave? And, and look at the, some would even say the audacity that Elisha has. I say the risk. He just takes the risk and he goes for it like Bruce says. And he's just like, I want a double portion of what you got. And we see in verse 9, of, uh, in verse 9 of 2 Kings 2, it says, So it was that when they had crossed over the, over the Jordan that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask him, what am I do for you? Before I'm taken away from you. And Elisha said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. See, that's what it means to take that risk. These two instances, they, there's a, a time in between. It just doesn't happen the next day. But Elisha gets to the place where he's like, I want a double portion of what you have. I want to get fully equipped so that the world may know who the God of Israel is. And that is what we need to do. We need to take that risk that the kingdom may expand. And we need to stop living in fear, living in shyness, and just playing it safely. Look at Elisha right away. He, um, Elijah responds to this request and he says, okay, if you see me leave, then your request will be granted. And we see Elisha sees them. The mantle falls to the ground. And Elisha goes, he picks it up. He crosses to the Jordan. He sees the river and he asks, where is the God of Israel? And he hits the river and it splits. And he crosses through. 
he takes that risk once again. And in faith, he asks, God, are you with me as you were with Elijah? And we see God responds. So as we wrap up today, you guys, as we wrap up tonight and we close, I want you to look at Elisha, just an ordinary guy, ordinary man who took the risk. And we see that by taking the risk, God took the ordinary and turned it into extraordinary. And we see that Elisha to the, um, to the point where when he asked Elijah for this double portion, when we look at the scriptures, there's no other individual apart from Jesus who does the number of miracles that Elisha does that are written in the scriptures. And we see it's because he took that risk and he said yes to the calling. There was no plan to save. There was no plan B. There was just everything the Lord, the Lord had called him to do. And he was on in and he said, yes, Lord, I will go. Though none go with me, I will follow. And that is what it means to take the risk for us tonight, you guys. So as we just get ready to pray, that's the question I leave you with tonight. Are you ready to take the risk for the Lord? So Father in heaven, Lord, as we just come before you, we give you all praise. We give you all thanks, Lord. We ask that you just continue to lead us, Father. We ask that you just continue to guide and Holy Spirit, we just pray that you just guard the things in our hearts that are from you, Lord God. Jesus, we ask that you continue to be our leading shepherd. We ask that you just continue to just lead our path and lead our way this week. We give you all thanks and we give you all praise. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Oops. Too close <laughs> to the amen, huh? I, I, aren't you going to close that? Well, just family, we love you. Oh. Ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oikos, we love you guys. And we just pray that you're doing well during this time. And I just want to encourage you that you just uh, continue to be strong in the Lord. We will see you next week. We're praying for you all. We love you all. And we just can't wait to gather soon together as a family once again. And we just come together and worship God. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to continue to get the, the messages. And know that we are praying for you and that we love you. And so we'll see you next Thursday, you guys. Love you guys. Thank you for watching service with us today. We miss you. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to us on YouTube.